Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly. And welcome to 3.1. We've got our new unit coming, so let's roll. All right, so we're talking about covalent bonds. So we need to describe covalent bonds. They are bonds between two nonmetals. Remember, we got a periodic table. Someone in one of my classes said we did not mention this. Uh, boo. Everything to the left is a metal. Not even right, the rest of the part over here. Everything to the right, I'm sorry, to the left is a metal. The only exception is this guy right here is a non-metal. These guys I'm coloring in so beautifully are non-metals. There's my non-metals. Okay. And I remember the metalloids are right on that stair stop. Okay. Electrons are shared. Ah, oh, share. Co- Oh, I mean share. Valence means outermost. Oh, we're sharing our outer electrons. And this type of bonding is called a directional share because it's bonded between and shared between exactly two. So this is a directional sharing. Oh, look. And a directional sharing. Oh, look. Okay. So that's the idea. So you're sharing. Covalent means sharing two. All right. So why does this happen? Covalent bonds share to fill their octet. CO2 above shows that carbon that started with four valence electrons. Remember in our little uh, periodic table fun that we did before, we labeled it. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Here's carbon. And carbon has four valence electrons. Um, and now has eight in it. So let's see if I can make that make sense. So carbon originally had this guy one, this guy two. This guy three, this guy four. But now it's kind of usurped. Oh, what a great word, usurped. One, two, three, four more. That's eight. Woohoo! Yeah. I'm now rocking eight. All right. So that's why carbon has eight. But what about poor oxygen? Well, um, oxygen started with one, two, three, four, five, six. <gasps> it's usurping carbons. Now, wait a minute. Can you do that? Yes, you can. So it counts for both of them. So if I asked you, if I said, hey, uh, Cam, do you have a house? Yeah. Hey, Cam, do your parents have a house? Yeah. Hey, Cam, does your dog have a house? Yeah. Does that mean your family has three houses? No. You all say you have a house, right? So they each share and have their own house. Make sense? Makes sense. All right. No, the electrons and double and bonds count for both oxygen and carbon. So isn't that nice? <laughs> Makes me happy. Um, the other thing about covalent bonding is they form molecules. So a molecule has a distinct beginning and an end. Okay, this is a molecule. Ooh, look at this. Now, if I tried to say what's the piece in here, uh, 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 this is not a uh, covalent compound. Not covalent. Oh, yes, covalent, because they have distinct beginning and ends. Physical properties. Let's talk about covalent bonds. They have a low melting point and low boiling point because the attractions between the molecules are very weak. See how they're separate? I'm like, eh, I'm not that interested in it. Um, all states of matter are possible. So I gave you some examples. Solid, butter. This is butter's formula. All nonmetals, butter's covalent. I want to share butter with my friends. Liquid, water is a liquid. And gas, oxygen, again, two nonmetals. Um, and we know oxygen's a gas. Uh, covalent compounds never conduct electricity. So electricity is a flow of ions, and there are no ions in covalent. It is a dull uh, substance. And only polar covalent molecules dissolve in water. Oh, uh, we're going to get to more polar covalent. Not next time. <gasps> right now. Right now. Well, almost right now. Nomenclature means naming some things. All right. So we're going to use prefixes. Prefixes go in front of a word. Prefix mono means one, di, two, tri, three, tetra, four, penta, five. Those of you who speak Greek know these prefixes very well. I don't. Um, well, I know them very well, but I do not speak Greek. Um, a few of them are tricky. Um, I think Nona is probably out of the range of normal, but I think you've got octopus taken care of. Hepta is tricky. Hex, remember, 
It's Halloween. Witches put hexes on you, and the devil's number is 666 for the hex. <laughs> I'm very voicey today. I don't know what the deal is there. Um, I do want to emphasize this is die, not try, not buy. So be careful. I think buy is Latin and die is Greek, but I could be wrong on that. Um, and I think mono is good. Try is good. Tetra is not quad, so just kind of be aware of that. And the rest of it is is pretty geometry based, normal. Okay. So use prefixes. Use your prefixes. Make the last one end in eyed and sound good. No mono on the first element. No OO or AO. Yo, man, I have no idea what you're talking about. Hey, me either. Let's take a look. I'm going to use prefixes. SF6. How many S's do I have? One. But no mono on the first one, right? So that means I don't use a prefix for that first one. So I'm just going to write sulfur. Then I have sick. The prefix for six is hexa. And then I've got fluorine. But I have to make it end in eyed and sound good. So is it going to be fluoride, flied? That'd be cool. Hexa fly, but it's not. It's hexa fluoride. This sound good thing really actually works quite well. Um, if you just trust yourself, if you say a bunch of choices, you'll get it. Next one. Oh, 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 prefix time, prefix time. Xenon is a nonmetal. So I'm going to have prefix for two is die. Die xenon. Prefix for eight is octabromide. Okay. S409. Oh, say so bromine. I consider for half a second. Bromide, uh, bromonide, but bromide is what we're going to go with. S409, prefix for four is tetra, tetra, tetra sulfur. Prefix for nine is nona. Now here you got to be careful. It's not going to be known. Oh man, magic line showing up again. It's not going to be nona oxide. That's wrong. Because we don't know. Hey oh it's just known oxide. Okay. And then it's even easier when we go this way. All right? Try nitrogen. Hey, that's nitrogen. Try means three. Monosulfide. Hey, mono means one. Sulfide means sulfur. Bum bum bum. Hexasulfur. Hey. That means sulfur. Hex means six. Dichloride. Chloride is chlorine. Ending in iodine sounding good. Di means two. Sodium dihydrogen phosphate. I put this one on here to trick you. Sodium, this is a metal. So we can't name it because it's not covalent. So that gets a little trickier later, but I wanted to I wanted to trick you early. Oh, I tricked you. I'm so cool, man. I'm so cool. I tricked you. All right. Polar covalent bonds. So the word polar is what we're going to focus on. Polar means ended. Polar bears live on the south end of the world. Or is that the north end of the world? The north end of the world. They don't live in the south end. That's where the penguins are. Right? So polar means ended. Polar bonds have a positive end and a negative end indicated by Delta positive and delta negative. I have somebody in AP chemistry who really hates making the delta sign. I do that. I think it looks like a musical note. So if you've ever taken a music class in fourth grade, you could do that and get away with that. Okay? What is that, a quarter note or something? I guess you got to fill it in to be a quarter note. But don't fill it in. But you get the idea. All right. So delta positive, that's the positive end. And delta negative, that's the negative end. Polarity occurs when the electronegativity difference is significant, okay? So this right here is argued among scientists, but it's not argued among Lyons Township High School. This is polar, 0.5 to 1.9, okay? Electronegativity is found in your periodic table. I gave you a periodic table that has the electronegativity values on it right there. So hydrogen's electronegativity value is 2.20. Electronegativity is the ability to attract bonded electrons. So the more electronegative atom will be delta negative. Example, 
determine if it is polar or not, show the delta. So I'm going to get myself out a periodic table. What, what? Which means you better get yours out too. Nitrogen is 3.04. Fluorine is 3.98. And someone pointed out in class today that the decimal point is missing on fluorine. Okay. So the difference between those is 0.94. I kind of absolute value it. I hope that doesn't drive you too insane. Um, so that means it's going to be polar. And I'm going to put my little deltas, my delta negative, goes by the guy with the bigger electronegativity value. And then my delta positive goes to the guy with the smaller one. That's it. All right, C to H. Carbon is 2.55. Hydrogen is, hey, it's right here, 2.20. If I subtract those, I get 0.35. Oh, that's not polar. Non-polar. 0.35. It's too small. Hmm. Oh, to oh. Oxygen is 3.44. Now doing this, when you're subtracting the same number from itself, it's like kissing your sister. Nothing happens here, right? 3.44 minus 3.44 is zero. So again... O to O is going to be nonpolar. 0. 0. 0.00 is too small. And then what if I do MG to I? Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Okay, so MG to I, this one is meant to make you go ick, right? So remember, if it's got to be covalent, it's got to be two nonmetals. But look at magnesium on your periodic table. Magnesium is an alkaline earth metal. If you look at it in the periodic table, it'll remind you of the important part here is it's a metal, right? So that one is um, does not apply. Not applicable, okay? It's kind of like asking me, um, is my tail itch today? I don't have a tail. That question does not apply to me. Polar covalent bonds have higher melting point and boiling point. Okay, so these are just the properties that we're kind of focusing on a little bit more. They still never conduct, but polar ones do dissolve in water. Notice nonpolar does not. Okay. Nonpolar covalent bond and compounds, perfectly even sharing. So electronegativity difference of 0.4 or less. So hey, 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 look up here. C to H is nonpolar, 0.35 is too small. O to O is nonpolar, 0, 0.00 is too small, so 0. 0.40 or less. No poles, so no deltas. Mm, no ends, how sad. Lowest melting point and boiling point, so notice that's lower than polar. Um, they still never conduct, they do not dissolve in water. That's a great way to differentiate between them. Do not dissolve in water, do dissolve in water. Because busting out electronegativities, that's not something we do in a lab very well. So if I have a white powder, I don't know if it's, you know, I don't know if it's going to be um, a covalent compound, nonpolar covalent compound, or drugs, drugs. So you want to use other properties to figure out what it is. Um, but it does dissolve in nonpolar liquids, and the nonpolar liquids we use is benzene. And that is it for today. And I will say to 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 to.